Hey everybody, it's Brad. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the Embroidery Works Everyday program uh, and just kind of touch on in one video rather than having several um, smaller videos a lot of the useful things that you can do with this. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is set up our environment to be a way that is comfortable for us to use. Um, and the, the first thing that I generally do when I'm working with this is change the, the grid from being in metric to in inches. Um, metric can be useful for a lot of things, but um, as Americans, we generally think it inches, and I'm no different. So up here in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you've got a choice between mm, millimeters, and inches. We're just going to left-click on inch, and it automatically adjusts my grid lines to be one-inch squares, which makes it easier to visualize how large uh, an area is. Um, so that's how you switch. If you ever need to switch it back, you just click on the millimeters, or click on the inches, um, and that's how it works. Um, so the next thing we want to do is set what hoop we're going to be working with. Um, uh, that way we can, uh, again, kind of get a feel for the scale of what we're doing. And the way you do that, you go up to your uh, Preferences button, which kind of looks like a, a manila envelope with stuff written on it. Um, left click on that, and this, uh, by default, it opens up your, your choices for your hoops. And there's every kind of baby lock hoop that there is in here. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, the, this big one here. 14 by 14, the top one, that's for the, the 10 needle. 360 by 200 is the large hoop for the 10 needle. 360 by 60 is the large cap hoop, uh, and so on and so on. And what you can actually do is find the hoops that are yours, uh, that work with your machine, and just delete the other ones. Uh, and you can even rename these hoops, which is useful. Like this here, it doesn't say on it anywhere, but the 200 by 300 hoop is the large Elissimo hoop. So if I go in here, I can actually edit this right here where it says edit. If I hit edit, change the name to my large hoop and just hit OK then you have a hoop called my large hoop and then you can always remember which one it is or you could type in the sizes in uh, in inches instead of metric which it has by default and it doesn't change when you change your inches to metric setting um, so you can you can figure out what your hoops are that way um, in general the uh, 200 by 300 that's the large Elissimo hoop the 200 by 200 is the 8 by 8 Elissimo hoop. The 180 by 300 is the border frame for the Elissimo. The 160, oh no, 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 I was wrong. It's not, it's the uh, the large hoop for an Elegante, a Unity, or a Spirit. Uh, the 160 by 260 is the large hoop for a Elagio or a new Asante, model BLN Asante. 150 by 150 is the new 6 by 6 hoop for the Unity and the Spirit. The 130 by 180 is a 5 by 7 hoop. 100 by 180 is the continuous hoop, and that one is labeled. I don't know why none of the other ones are labeled, but that is the uh, the continuous border hoop. Uh, the same one is for the Elegante and the Elissimo. So, y you know, the ones that came with the upgrades. Um, that they're both the same hoop. 100 by 100 is a 4 by 4 hoop. These two uh, are the hat hoops for the... Um, 6 and 10 needle. The 90 by 80, the oval hoop, this is your, um, that is, what's the 90 by 80? I think that's the little monogramming hoop. You know, I'm not positive about that in the 60 by 40. I know one of them is a monogramming hoop. Sue me, I don't remember which one it is. I'm sorry. Um, oh, you know what? I know what that is. That's a hoop for the, t the for the multi-needle machines. For They have like some round hoops. That's one of those. Uh, and the 60 by 40 is the tiny monogramming hoop. Uh, okay, so you could also choose to rotate by 90 degrees any of these hoops. So if I pick my large hoop and rotate 90, I'm going to get the large hoop for the Elissimo, which was, again, remember that's 200 by 300, and rotated 90 degrees, so I'm actually looking at it sideways. Um, so that way we can see what hoop we're, we're choosing to use, and if I want to change my mind about that anytime, I can just go in and pick. Like maybe I want to do the 5 by 7 hoop, that's 130 by 180. Hit OK. There it is. So now we've got our hoop selected. We've got our grid set up. Uh, well how do we get our embroidery design? Well, there's two ways, and they work exactly the same way. You go to File and Open, or you can just hit this shortcut to the Open button right here. We just click on Open. And uh, right now I'm looking at uh, a folder on my computer. Uh, it's on C Drive, Designer's Gallery, My Free Designs. Most people have this if they have Designer's Gallery Studio. These designs just kind of come with the program. Um, and uh, But I to get to your designs, you have to know where they are. They might be on your flash drive or in a folder or on a CD or something. 
Um, but you got to know how to navigate to them. Like if they're on a CD, I would they'd be on here. If they were uh, on a flash drive, it'd be like removable disk G or something like that. So you go in and find some designs. I am going to pick um, this fish, say. Doesn't matter. So if I want to pick this fish, I left click on it and click open. And uh, one thing to note is if your window is really small like this, like mine, de the default was really tiny. Um, there's actually a little thing of three lines. You can left click and drag and increase the size of this window so you can see your designs a little better. Uh, so anyway, I pick the fish and click open, and there is my fish. So uh, just by opening the design, the program starts to give me some information about it. Uh, if I direct my attention down here to the lower left area of the screen, it tells me that the, the hoop that I have selected is the uh, 7 and the 16th by 5 and 1 8th. That's the 5 by 7 hoop. Um, it tells me that my design is 3 and 11 sixteenths by 3 and 1 eighth inch, so that's the size of my design, even though it doesn't say down here that's what that is. The stitch count is 15,210, that's how many stitches are in this design. And I've got seven needles for seven colors. Um, so there's seven needle changes, and there's a total of seven colors in the design. Um, I have uh, under my properties box here, it shows me what each of these colors are. Um, so it's telling me right now in Robus and Anton, but I can actually change my, my thread brand in here. If I click on the thread button here and change the brand of thread that I use, so say I use Sulky Rayon, I can just go ahead and hit OK. And if I click use this as my preferred brand, it will not only set it, oh yeah, if I, if I click use this as my preferred brand and set OK, then it will not only set it to Sulky Rayon, but if, uh, if that's the color that I always use, now when I click on Preferred here, it'll automatically convert it. I don't have to go in and choose it. So whatever my design is, if I just click Preferred, it'll tell me the colors in um, the Sulky Rayon color set. Um, so it might change the color slightly um, because there might not be an exact analog to whatever the old color was, but that's a convenient way to make it work with your thread collection. Okay, so uh, that's my Properties menu here. Um, and that is always up, whether I have something selected or not. Uh, the, the properties menu is up. Okay, um, so if I go into uh, the object tree up here, this is called an object tree, and what it shows me is the individual objects that are currently in my design area. If I brought in another embroidery design, I would actually see the entire other embroidery design under this fish, um, and each of them would have a little plus sign. And If I click on the plus sign, it breaks the design up into its individual parts, so I can click on the individual parts and select them, Notice how it grays out the parts that are not selected. Okay, and then if I click on the top, it just highlights all of these. So if I wanted to mess with an individual part of this design, it doesn't let you do it um, just out of the box, so to speak. You have to change a setting uh, because pre-made designs are locked, but we can unlock them. Um, if you look at the top of our object tree here, while I've got my fish selected, I just hit the unlock selected objects button and now it's going to let me pick a single part of the design and I can move it, I can delete it, um, you know, if I'm, maybe I want to get rid of the big fill in the back, back here, like this big tangerine colored um, background and just hit delete and maybe I'm sewing this fish out on something that's already the color that I want the fish to be, um, you know, there's all kinds of reasons that you might want to do that, um, so that's how you do it. I'm just going to undo that. And speaking of undo, your undo and redo buttons are up here. It's a uh, curved arrow uh, for undo and a curved arrow the other way for redo. And you can undo all the way back to the very beginning of your design. So if you're really far in and you realize you've made a lot of missteps, you can always undo back to a point where it wasn't messed up. Um, so those are your undo and your redo buttons. We've also got the color sort button. And what the color sort button does is if we had uh, a bunch of repeats in here, like instead of saying, uh, seven needles and seven color changes. If there were unnecessary color changes in there, like it sewed out orange and then later it sewed out orange again, um, it can reduce the the amount of times that it needs to put the same color in. Um, you got to be careful doing that though because a lot of times you have the same color in one design and it's for layering purposes so you can try that out. Um, you just basically click it and it reduces the needle count if it can. Um, but uh, generally, for a lot of designs, it's best to just l leave the, the colors in the order that they're in. Um, that way you don't mess up the, st the structure of the design. Um, so uh, there's that one. And the next is our 3D button. If we turn that off, 
it's sh uh, mine was on I don't know if it's on or off by default but it shows like a 2d picture where the stitches you can kind of see through the stitches a little bit and then you turn it back on I'm just gonna left click on it and it gives you like a realistic preview of it I like the realistic preview look better um, but there are times that it's useful to be able to kind of see through your design um, like for layering and stuff uh, and then the next button over is a density map and what this does is you click on it and it shows you um, how dense the design is so blue is uh, like one or one to two layers uh, of stitching uh, orange or yellow is like three layers of stitching and then the red is four or more layers of stitching um, so you want to have as little red as possible in a design and uh, there's actually a way to reduce the density built into this program so um, I, I may as well show you that if you look down a little bit there's this this broom button I call it the sweep tool. They call it cleanup stitches. Um, I call it the sweep tool because it's a broom. Um, they call it the cleanup stitches button. So, you know, call it whatever you want. But when you left click on it, it'll try to look for unnecessary stitches that are hidden by other stitches and reduce the overall density. So, when you do this, you should see a um, moderate to um, to high reduction in stitch count of the design. And generally, it will sew out and look exactly the same. Um, just with fewer stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the button and we'll see see how much of the design is now blue. We'll put it back into 3D and see if it looks the same. Just hit the uh, density map again. Hit the 3D button and we can sort of see through a little few parts of this design when we look at it on the software. Here, let's zoom in a little bit. Zoom back out a little bit. Yeah, you just kind of got to experiment with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It works better for larger objects, um, and it works better for objects that don't have a ton of detail because a lot of that detail comes from really dense stitching. Um, but if we look down here, we got rid of 2,000 stitches or so. Um, so, you know, on, on a lot of designs, you can get away with doing that and save yourself a few minutes of stitching. Um, so that's just the clean up stitches button. And if you don't like what it did, you can always just undo with your undo button. Um, and oh, it was mo way more than uh, 2,000. Look at that. I forgot it was 15,000. I thought it was like 12,000. So that actually took out 5,000 stitches when it did that. That's pretty cool. Um, I've had I've had a lot of good results from that, and I've had a few times where it really didn't look right after I did that. So you want to sew out a test, um, but if you're going to be sewing out a design a lot of times um, it's it's nice to be able to save time doing that and make it less dense and also if you have a design that just is straight up too dense that will fix it um, you know a lot of free designs you download are way too dense um, so that fixes that uh, the next buttons are preferences button um, I, I clicked on this earlier to select my hoop but there's some other stuff in here you can change your grid settings um, you have the the grid be dots instead of lines you can change the spacing so if instead of um, having every one inch I'd want it to have every quarter inch I could do that like if I go in and put it put in 0.25 here on both of these settings for inches now every square box I'm gonna hit apply down here so you can see every box in here is now one square quarter inch um, and then if you don't like what you've done you can always hit reset to defaults snap to grid um, what this does is makes it so when you move your design it will snap to the grid although this design isn't doing it I think it's actually um, only when you're doing lettering uh, in this. Let's see if I'm right. Bring in some lettering, and yeah, see, it wants to it wants to snap to these lines. That way, I can make sure I get something on perfectly on a line. Uh, and when I say snap, it actually kind of right there. I didn't move it at the very end there. It moves it and puts it right on the line. Um, we're going to talk more about text in a minute, but that's what the snap to grid button does. Um, in grid settings here, I'm going to turn that off because I don't like it. Um, calibrate screen, what this does is it actually, um, you can go in and take a, a ruler and put it up to your screen right here and you change this scale here so that it's exactly perfect. That way your, uh, your on-screen inches are exactly one inch. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just want to leave it to the defaults, but if you want to, to have this be like a one-to-one -one size um, you can do that oops meant to hit the preferences all right uh, we see we got mouse wheel you can have that do either um, adjusting the zoom which is the default or scrolling the window which would make you pan around and that would drive me crazy so leave that on and just zoom trust me check for updates um, you can turn on or off whether it will check whether there's a new update or not you may as well leave that on 
ghost mode. Um, that is how intense the um, the after image is when you select an individual individual piece of the design. So if I increase that, the um, the part that's not selected back here that's called the ghost. The part that's not selected will be bolder if I increase that. Um, so that's what that does. Uh, let's see conversion. We can choose to um, convert to PES or all these other things. Really. I don't even bother to mess with this stuff. Um, the defaults should all be fine. I think everybody in this class has uh, a baby lock. If you don't, you can change your stitch format to whatever your barbarian um, embroidery design format is. Uh, but we're going to leave ours on PES. Um, see down here, files. Uh, basically, yeah, you want to leave these all on. That that makes it so when you um, save a design and something's overlapping, it automatically removes any overlaps. Oh, printing. You can change your print setup. So uh, if you don't want it to print the color sequence when you print a design, um, you can turn that off. Or uh, if you print it with a realistic rendering, it won't show the jump stitches. That drives me nuts when I print out a template of a design and it shows jump stitches all over it. Um, and adjustments basically leave all this stuff, leave all this stuff alone um, for sizing. Um, the the defaults are right for for doing that. So anyway, that's just everything that's in the preferences screen. Um, and next is our zoom. Uh, this magnifier tool, if you left click it zooms in, if you right click it zooms out. It's much easier to use the mouse scroll wheel uh, though, or use the, um, yeah, see now, you click on it to turn it back off, to use the mouse scroll wheel or this slider here, I think is much easier than using this tool. The next one over is a measure. Uh, this is a ruler. If you left click in one place and drag to another place, it tells you the distance between these two places in the lower left hand corner down here. Um, click and drag so I can measure like his fin. Say I want to see how big his fin is for whatever reason. I can do that and it tells me the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Um, so that's the measure tool and to turn this off you have to click it. The next one over is a stitch simulator. This lets me actually sew out the design um, by clicking and dragging this bar here. I can actually watch my design sew out or if I want I can hit the play button and watch it sew out although it takes much much longer to do so. That's a stitch simulator. The next one is the stitch editor, and you only have this where you can edit stitches if you have Embroidery Works Advanced. So since we're talking about every day, we're not going to mess with that. Uh, the select objects is your default tool. That's what lets you select an object and move it around in the hoop. Um, not much else to it. You just click and drag to move the design around and left click on something to select that thing. So if I don't have a box around my design, I left click and it will put the box around it and I can move my design around. The next one down is the Merge Design button, and what this does is will allow me to import things from my uh, my library of designs that came with the program. So I've got the AccuQuilt applique stuff, and then there's also some basic ones that come with the program here, little frames, motif shapes, and uh, if I want to do one of these, uh, I just pick like this little fleur-de-lis here, I just hit OK, and it imports that into my design, and I can select it along with my design um, and that's pretty much what that does uh, and we're going to talk more about that when we get into the uh, accu quilt shapes I'm going to go ahead and delete this little fleur de lis and to delete something I left click on it and hit the delete key on the keyboard delete it's gone next button is the text tool the text tool is really cool and fun um, and I'm just going to have another video a separate video on using that um, and then the next one is merge stitch file. Now merge stitch file, this is how we would bring in another different design into this design field. So if I left click on that, it has a completely different interface, of course, because why would anything be easy? Um, but so here I have, I have a little file tree in the files that I was looking at were in C drive, designers gallery, I had the little plus sign here. This works like um, old studio plus did. Um, so designers gallery and I can move my windows around so I can see more of it see how I've got like little selection things that let me scroll this around and it was in my free designs and then here's the designs that were in that folder uh, so if I want to bring this little boat in now I've got both these designs in the same design field um, otherwise if you go to open a design watch what it does say I want to open this it actually opens it in a separate design field so um, that's how you would get more than one design in at a time is uh, with this merge stitch file button. Okay, um, we're going to keep going here, just plugging along. Um, we've got the rotate button here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of gloss over this sizing 
over here uh, and just go into the next section. We're going to go back and deal with sizing in a bit. Um, rotate will let me rotate 90 degrees at a time, left or right, um, or I can set in a custom rotation angle. Let's say 45, hit enter, and now it rotates it at a 45 degree angle. I can also rotate with this little blue circle that comes along with the selection box, and that lets me rotate it anywhere I want just by moving my mouse. Okay, so that's rotating, and then to set it back to zero, we'll put it so that it has no angle at all. Um, just hit enter, and it's back to straight straight across. Are you still with me? If you're getting tired, you can pause. Go get yourself a drink or something. Um, I know this is a long video. Anyway, uh, we also have, uh, continuing over to our right, we have the flip vertically buttons. Basically a mirror image flips it on the uh, vertical axis or we can flip it on the horizontal axis left and right to mirror image. So that's how you would mirror image a design left or right or up and down. Uh, we have the center designs in the hoop button. So if we had a design and we moved it around and we want to make it just go straight into the middle, you hit this and it will center your design in the middle of the hoop. Um, so that's handy. Uh, we also have the fit to hoop button and this is the first sizing um, that we've really talked about here. Uh, what this will do is make your design as large as it possibly can be within the current hoop that you have selected. Um, so if I hit this, boom, that's as big as I can make this in a 5 by 7 hoop. Um, now, what if I had a big design in a small hoop? Well, then it's going to decrease the size of the design, but keep it the maximum size that it can possibly be in that hoop. So if I've got a design that's too big for my machine, uh, like a lot of people do, um, you just go in and select the hoop for your machine. Maybe I've got a design here that's this big, um, but I only have a Sophia, so I only have a, a 4x4 em em environment. So I'm going to click on my 4x4, which is the 100 by 100 field, click OK, and see my design does not fit within my hoop here. I touch the uh, fit to hoop button, and boom, it fits in my hoop now, and everybody's happy. I can save it, and read, I'm ready to go. Um, so that's the fit to hoop button. Down here, we've got align and distribute. That ha deserves its own separate video using that. Um, basically what it does is it allows me to, like say I had designs that were supposed to be in the corner, I can have them align and distribute. Um, basically we'll put like say I want to make sure that they're all perfectly lined up, like if I had four corners, um, uh, that's a separate video for sure. The next tool here, remove hidden stitches, is kind of a silly tool because it doesn't actually do anything. Um, what this does is it's supposed to give you a preview of when it removes overlapped stitching. Um, like if I have some lettering here, uh, it will remove some of the stitching from underneath this when I save the design. Uh, and this is supposed to give me a preview of what that looks like. So if I click it with some designs layered together like this, it now has removed the stitches in there. It shows me that there are fewer stitches, 15, 32, instead of however many there were before. Let's see, 15, uh, 15,211 um, before I did it. Um, but it it doesn't stay that way if you move it. it. It puts the stitches back as soon as you move it. It doesn't actually really do that until you save the design. Um, what it will do is show you the different the difference in the stitch count. So again, 15,211 down here at the bottom. I hit the remove overlap stitches button and now it's got 15,200. So it only removed 11 stitches. It really um, it didn't need to remove stitches here because there was only one layer of stitches under here. So that's why it only removed a few. If I take this and put it in a more dense area of the design, let's click off of it. So we got still we got 15 208, we hit the remove stitches button. Now it took over 100 stitches out that time because that part of the design was more dense. Um, but it doesn't actually do anything when you hit this button. Um, it just gives you a preview. Um, and it'll automatically remove the stitches that it needs to remove uh, on its own when you save this design. Um, so that's what this little button is. That's why when you click on it, nothing seems to happen because it doesn't. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these letters for now because we're going to do lettering later. Um, uh, okay, next button here is the Project Advisor. So when we click on the Project Advisor, this lets us have uh, all these different options for what we're going to sew our design out on. Like say I want to put this fish on a fleece. 
it gives me uh, recommendations for what type of needle, uh, in this case embroidery needle size 11 or 12, thread, 30 weight thread, um, it says, I mean, you know, you can use whatever weight thread you want, but it's telling you you'll get best results with 35 weight thread. Um, the topping is telling you to use a water-soluble topping, and then the backing, self-adhesive tearaway, or a water-soluble self-adhesive. Um, and then you can change this to say, you know, okay, it's actually a medium weight fleece, and it'll change um, some of the things that it tells you. Like here, we don't need to use a topping if it's only a medium weight. If it's heavy, then you need to use a water-soluble topping. And then it gives you a little blurb about how to sew the thing out, too. Um, so, you know, if there's any kind of secrets that need to be told, they'll be told to you in the project notes. Now, if you look up here, we've got the Stitch Perfect option on mine. You probably don't have that. If you have every day, you definitely don't have it. Uh, what this does is it'll actually change the properties of the design based on what type of uh, fabric I choose in here. It only comes with Advanced, not every day, and that's what program I'm using. Uh, so we'll just ignore that for this video because this video is for every day. Uh, so that's the Project Advisor. Very helpful. Uh, next button we talked about already, it's the Sweep where it'll clean up the unnecessary stitches. Um, we, uh, we already went over how that works. And the last thing on my screen is actually something you're not going to have unless you have advanced. Um, this is uh, called precise positioning um, and I am not going to really talk about it because it's only in Embroidery Works Advanced. Um, so the next thing I want to do is some lettering. So I'm going to get rid of my fish. I just left click on my fish and hit delete and he's gone. And to go into the lettering, I move my mouse over this capital letter A. It says create letters when I hover over it. Left click and up comes the lettering program. Now there's a lot of things we can do with lettering. Um, and I'm just going to go through each of the three sections on lettering. Um, the first section, which is the one that's selected by default, is multi-line text. If you hover your mouse over each one of these sections, it tells you what it is. Uh, multi-line text and what this is is I can go in and type in more than one line at a time embroidery works is easy and hit set and I can do more than one line so I've got one line I hit enter and it takes me back to uh, the next line um, and I can also change the alignment of this down here if you look I've got three choices left center and right and this is just like a word processor left center and right Okay, so you see how that works. Center is the default. Um, you also have the ability to change your font right here. So this, I'm going to have more than you're going to have, okay, because I've got the advanced version of the program. Um, but you'll have 12 fonts in here. Um, the block one is in everybody's. So you pick what font you want, and it comes up. Now, as you can see, this design is way, this design, anyway, is way too big for my... Um, embroidery field because I've got the 4x4 four four hoop selected and I can see that this is way bigger than that. Um, so you want to make sure that your letters are going to actually fit in the area that you want to put them. I'm going to put it back on block which is still too big for my hoop um, but we're going to get to uh, doing some sizing here in, in a bit. But of course we could always just hit which button? Fit to hoop right here. Boom. Now it fits in my hoop. Um, anyway so you can pick your font there. Now this what's this question mark here? Well what this is, I'm going to click it and show you what this is, is it shows you the available characters for this font. So this is everything that's digitized for it. Uh, capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and all these punctuation marks. And then it tells you the uh, minimum recommended size, and this is 5 millimeters tall, and the maximum allowable size is 75 millimeters tall. Uh, so that just lets you know how big or small you can make each letter. Um, so yeah, that's that. Hit OK here. Uh, I've got some sliders here to play with. I can change the, the slant, make them italic in the other way and see how live action changes my uh, orientation of my letters and if you hit the zero next to it it takes it back to the default spacing increases the spacing between individual letters so you can move those sliders around if you don't like the default spacing and again I can change it so that it takes it back to zero the word spacing is going to change the space between individual words you can just move those sliders and then line spacing changes the space between the lines pretty simple really. I uh, just move the sliders around uh, and set it to what you like. So that's your multi-line. Um, now you also have uh, the next one over is a single line. So I'm going to delete my second line here and just go straight into single line and it imports my line. If I didn't delete my second line it would only import the top line anyway so really I didn't need to do that. Uh, but what this is really made for um, is for monograms. So if I want this to be a monogram type in my initials here 
Okay, so I've got my, my initials. Um, I can go in and there are fonts in here. At least there will be one or two on yours um, that have MGM in front of them. And those are made to be monograms. So I'm going to select this MGM diamond here. And here you see it's actually curved my letters to perfectly fit uh, your tradi traditional diamond monogram. Um, and we can also change uh, quick styles in here will actually allow me to have those letters sew out in kind of different formats. Um, this one is really made to be uh, normal to make it like this, but if I want to choose another font in here and have it be a monogram, um, I can change the style here so it's, you know, doing this, put it on an oval, they call this a bridge where it goes under like that. So you can really monkey around with the different settings for making your own customized monograms. Uh, and all this is pretty much directly imported from Monogram Works, uh, this part of it. Um, again, we've got sliders. I can change the slant. See how it makes it go wild on this setting. Look at it. It's moving it all around. It's making it like inch across the screen like a worm. That's funny. Uh, never, never seen one do that before. Uh, but again, you can set that back to zero. Spacing, that's going to change the space between all the letters see that just moving it with the slider and um, the I can have it curve on the top it's not going to do anything with the design in this configuration if I had it going on uh, normal here I'll set this back to normal lettering if I move this see how it bows out the top and here it bows out the bottom this actually uh, lets me kind of make my own style uh, and again I can change that back to zero I can also have it do it's you got grow peak shrink curve so if I go in it just does a little bit differently each way okay so you can kind of experiment with those um, and then the last thing that we have is the circle uh, circle text and what this is going to do is put my lettering on a curve so if I go in here and change my text from uh, BAM to um, I will say embroidery works again just need a long word to curve I'm just gonna hit enter and it puts my word on a curve which I can change the radius of by moving this little slider okay so I can curve it more or less and if you curve it more then um, you curve it like all the way to the left it starts to put it on a spiral so uh, the, the longer your your phrase the better here okay hit enter it just makes it a, a larger and larger spiral letter. So that's how you make a spiral letter design with this. Um, and then watch as I move the radius out, it becomes an arc again. Okay, so that's how you do your curved letters. And again, here we have the same options for slanting and spacing and uh, word spacing and all that good stuff. Uh, okay, so that's your basic lettering here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, so that's it for the basic overview of the program. Those are your, your basic functions that you can do with this. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do, uh, of course, but um, those are the basics. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.